And we're very sure that that piece that we can see is a small bit of what may be an infinite universe beyond. We don't know, actually. In 1823, German astronomer Heinrich Olbers proposed the idea of a static universe. He suggested if the universe is infinite and filled with stars all at different distances from Earth, then every single sight line should land on a star. This means that if the universe is infinite and contains an infinite number of bright objects, the night sky will be bright. Since the night sky is dark, this tells us that one of our assumptions about the universe is incorrect. This is called Olbers' paradox, which intrigued scientists for decades. However, a century later, Edwin Hubble's observations confirmed an expanding universe, which resolved Olbers' paradox. Modern astronomy rejects the idea of a static universe, but they are now facing another question. What is the size of the universe? The estimated diameter of the observable universe is approximately 93 billion light years. According to famous British physicist Brian Cox, within this vast expanse, there are as many as two trillion galaxies. There are a lot of things about the universe that, that I find it almost impossible to imagine. Well, actually impossible to imagine. One is just the size and scale of it. I mean, in the piece of the universe we can see, uh, there are something like, you know, roughly, two trillion galaxies. I mean, we haven't counted them all, but that's a, an estimate based on surveys of the local universe. Two trillion, 2,000 billion galaxies. And each galaxy is, let's say, around the size of the Milky Way. Some are bigger, some are smaller, but the Milky Way has 400 billion stars in it. It takes light over 100,000 years to cross a galaxy and there are two trillion of them in the piece of the universe we can see. And we're very sure that that piece that we can see is a small bit of what may be an infinite universe beyond. We don't know, actually. And I always say, you know, don't get worried about that because nobody can picture it. It is impossible to visualize the scale of the universe. Um, so that's the first thing. <laughs> right. I, could, I could then list a lot of more of things, but we'll stop there for now. But just the size and scale of it, I think, is beyond imagination. Join us today as we reveal the mind-boggling scale of the universe that will leave you in a state of complete disbelief. Scientists believe that the observable universe represents only a minute fraction of the universe's incomprehensible scale, which is potentially hundreds, thousands, or even millions of times more expansive. An essential consideration is the definition of the universe. It includes all of space and time, every point in space throughout its existence. Space denotes the volume within the universe, the three-dimensional field extending beyond Earth's atmosphere, serving as the extensive backdrop to the universe's matter. Time is the continuous progression of cause to effect within this space, shaping life, death, creation, and evolution. Space and time are intertwined and constitute a system of nearly unfathomable complexity, termed space-time, which is often described as four-dimensional. In this conceptual framework, space comprises three dimensions, and time serves as a fourth dimension. Any cross-section of a 3D cube along this axis represents the universe at a specific point in its existence. Our understanding of space-time and numerous scientific concepts can be attributed to a singular individual, Albert Einstein. He grasped the nature of space and time in an unprecedented manner, providing us with two foundational frameworks that shape our understanding of reality today. In 1905, Einstein introduced his theory of special relativity, revolutionizing our perspective on light, mass, and energy. Subsequently, in 1915, he unveiled his theory of general relativity, offering a comprehensive explanation of gravity, space, time, and their interconnections. These refined theories have withstood the test of time for over a century, forming the basis for much of our current knowledge about the universe. According to Einstein, mass represents a condensed form of energy, causing a curvature in the flat plane of space and time that defines our universe. This resulting curvature, in turn, manifests as gravity. Gravity emerges as the consequence of mass-induced distortions in space-time, causing objects of mass to attract each other. It stands as the simplest yet most profound among the fundamental forces governing our universe. Unlike other forces requiring specific conditions like heat, gravity is inherently linked to mass. Possessing mass equates to possessing gravity, 
and consequently, it governs the behavior of the universe across all scales, from the interactions at the particle level to the expansive dynamics of galaxies. Our comprehension of the latter stems from Edwin Hubble, an American astronomer unafraid to tackle profound questions, leading to several groundbreaking discoveries. Before Hubble, the prevailing belief held that the universe was static, neither expanding nor contracting, filled solely with stars and nebulae in every direction. Yet, in late 1924, Hubble revealed that a so-called nebula was in fact a distinct cluster of stars akin to the Milky Way, but situated much farther than initially believed. This disclosure unveiled that the Milky Way galaxy is part of a broader universe, potentially comprising thousands or even millions of other galaxies. By the decade's end, in 1929, Hubble made one of the most significant discoveries. The universe is actively expanding, contradicting the static viewpoint. These revelations, coupled with Einstein's theories and contributions from other eminent scientists, collectively shaped our current cosmological model, the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, or Lambda CDM. While this model is a well-established and documented framework for cosmology, acknowledging its imperfections and lingering questions, it remains our most comprehensive attempt to fathom the universe's origins and nature, at least for now. At the core of it all lies the Big Bang Theory, proposing that the universe originated from a point of exceptionally high density and pressure. As our universe continually expands, retracing this ongoing process back to its inception brings us to a point where the universe was minute and compressed before undergoing sudden expansion. Although the hows and whys remain uncertain, compelling evidence indicates that at the very least, the universe was significantly smaller and hotter approximately 13.8 billion years ago. The period preceding this ventures into the untestable realms of physics, but the prevailing belief is that in the initial nanoseconds of the universe's existence, an event called cosmic inflation caused a sudden and radical expansion, surpassing the limits of known speeds and laws. This transformative event didn't alter the universe in size, but in scale, magnifying the minuscule universe by a factor of at least 10 to the power of 78 in volume. In a fraction of a second, every nanometer of space stretched to over 10 light years. While the total expanse of the universe post-inflationary epoch remains uncertain, the consequence was that the universe's interior was dramatically spread apart, creating a much sparser environment. This expansive shift provided ample room for the unfolding of various events, granting primordial energy greater freedom. Following the period of inflation, as the universe's temperature continued to decrease, the energy within condensed into an extensive universal plasma. Subsequently, this plasma decayed into the initial particles and eventually transformed into subatomic particles, such as protons and neutrons. Fast forward nearly 14 billion years, and the universe has expanded significantly, teeming with more substantial and diverse structures. Atoms have aggregated into gas clouds, and these clouds in turn have given rise to stars. Presently, a majority of these stars are part of vast ancient galaxies, these galaxies predominantly form clusters and superclusters, interconnecting to create a three-dimensional network traversing intergalactic space, commonly known as the cosmic web. In discussions about space, our reference point is typically the observable universe or the known universe. This constitutes a spherical geocentric space encompassing all detectable galaxies and matter from Earth. Their light emissions have traveled and reached the solar system over time. Light traveling at just under 300,000 kilometers per second, represents the universe's maximum achievable speed. However, even slightly beyond our galaxy, a light decay occurs, affecting our ability to perceive the universe as it currently exists. This is why utilizing light years as a unit of measurement proves beneficial. Proxima Centauri, our closest star, is situated 4.2 light years away indicating that we observe the star as it appeared about four years ago. This principle extends beyond individual stars to the vastness of interstellar space. For instance, the expanse between galaxies is immeasurably larger. The separation between us and our nearest spiral galaxy, Andromeda, spans approximately two and a half million light years. Consequently, 
our view of Andromeda corresponds to a time when humanity was just beginning to employ stones as tools. The concept holds that the farther a galaxy is, the greater the light travel time, rendering the galaxy's appearance younger. Thus, as we delve deeper into the cosmos, our gaze extends further back in time, unveiling various stages in the universe's evolution. The unparalleled Hubble telescope has played a pivotal role in facilitating this exploration of the universe's rich history. Launched in 1990, the Hubble telescope, comparable in size to a bus, orbits the Earth with a fixed gaze on space. This positioning allows it to capture images of the universe without interference from atmospheric disturbances that impede ground-based telescopes. Over the years, the telescope has undergone numerous upgrades, equipped with various instruments and filters, consistently maintaining its position at the forefront of human technology. Hubble has captured more than 1.1 million stunning images of the cosmos since its launch, ranging from nearby stars and nebulae to galaxies at the farthest reaches of the observable universe. Its advanced camera technology enables us to peer even deeper into space, unveiling a universe that is much younger and constantly undergoing change and evolution. The Hubble Deep Field remains a singular representation of this evolution, taken in 1995 following a service upgrade two years earlier which significantly enhanced the telescope's capability to observe the most distant galaxies. This image stands as one of the most crucial in Hubble's collection. Approximately one-tenth of the Hubble telescope's operational time is designated for esteemed staff and physicists to investigate unforeseen phenomena. In this context, Robert Williams, the then director of the Space Telescope Science Institute, used his allotted time to capture faint and distant galaxies, aiming to challenge our understanding of the age and size of the universe. Diverging from Hubble's typical luminous targets, the deep field image resulted from directing the telescope's instruments toward a minute, seemingly vacant section of the night sky, where Earth observers perceived nothing. For this to succeed, the telescope required a region with a significantly high galactic latitude to avoid obscuration by the Milky Way's core light. Consequently, a small section of the Ursa Major constellation, also recognized as the Big Dipper, or the Plow, was selected. The pinpoint location chosen by Williams was minute, covering an area about one-twelfth of the moon's diameter in the sky, equivalent to a mere 124 millionth of the total night sky's expanse. Over a span of approximately 10 days, the telescope collected light from this designated area, capturing 342 photographs using various filters. Subsequently, the data underwent processing, culminating in the compilation of an image that unveiled a splendid panorama depicting the universe's history. Within this minuscule pin-sized segment of the sky, over 3,000 galaxies are dispersed at various distances, encompassing some of the oldest and most remote galaxies known at the time. This image doesn't merely illustrate distances in the universe. Instead, it serves as a window transporting us back through time, in the shallower field, we encounter vibrant spiral galaxies, but as we journey further into the past, the galaxies exhibit diminishing luminosity and structure. The majority of the distant galaxies within the image occupy only a few pixels and emit fainter light. This is because these early galaxies hadn't undergone vigorous star formation. Instead, they possessed abundant early star-forming gases, the prevalence of unstructured irregular galaxies in the early universe reinforces our belief that post-Big Bang, matter started to form from the ground up, initially atoms, then stars, followed by star clusters and torrid dwarf galaxies. Over billions of years, the cycles of star birth, death, and galactic collisions, rich spiral galaxies like those observed here began to emerge, complex galaxies teeming with luminous stars. If we could peer into the deepest recesses of the current deep field, we might witness large spiral and elliptical galaxies resembling those in our nearby space. However, light grants us a unique opportunity to gaze backward through time. In the subsequent year, a follow-up deep field image was captured to confirm the original representation of the distant universe. The Hubble deep field south image yielded similar results, even capturing light from a quasar in the early universe. Following a servicing mission to Hubble in 2002, the telescope achieved even deeper images. In 
In 2004, it captured the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, the most profound photograph of the universe to date, taken from the constellation of Fornax. This image pushes the boundaries of what visible light in space allows us to observe. To extend our view further back, we must turn to infrared radiation. In 2009, a servicing mission enhanced Hubble with new infrared detecting instruments. Hubble subsequently recaptured all three deep fields in infrared, unveiling thousands more early galaxies, including some of the most distant ever observed. Edwin Hubble and his enduring legacy significantly shaped modern astronomy. Among his discoveries, one stands out, serving as the foundation for everything discussed today. Cosmic expansion, the revelation that the universe itself is expanding. This realization followed Hubble's survey of 24 recently identified nearby galaxies, establishing a linear relationship between their radial velocity and the distance from Earth. In simple terms, galaxies beyond our local group all exhibit motion away from us, with those farther away receding faster. The universal trend suggests that everything in the cosmos is moving away from each other, occupying its distant space without altering its position. Hubble's deduction was that space itself expands uniformly, causing the galaxies of the universe to move farther apart. This expansion results in the creation of new space throughout the entire universe, with space stretching in every direction to generate additional space. The analogy is akin to the universe inflating rather than simply expanding. Since all objects are receding from one another, there's no central point. Space lacks boundaries, edges, or defining walls. To visualize this, consider a sphere representing the universe, where space is mapped onto the outer surface instead of the inside. As the sphere expands, the surface area of space for external galaxies increases proportionally, eliminating the notion of a central point. While the sphere itself possesses a center, it signifies a moment in time, the Big Bang, rather than a specific location in the universe. This concept implies that even if space occupies a finite volume, one can traverse the universe endlessly without encountering an edge. This is comparable to flying an airplane around Earth's equator. You wouldn't fall off or run out of Earth to traverse. Instead, gravity would eventually bring you back to the starting point. Therefore, if you could travel significantly faster than light speed in a straight line, you would still return to the same location eventually. Evidence of the universe's expansion is observable everywhere, thanks to the phenomenon known as redshift. Redshift occurs when electromagnetic radiation, including visible light, experiences an increase in wavelength. This stretching of the wave leads to a reduction in wave frequency and photon energy. In the case of visible light and analyzing a galaxy's spectral emissions, this results in the absorption lines of specific elements shifting toward the red end of the spectrum, causing visible light to appear red. Given that the universe is expanding universally, as light travels from other galaxies towards Earth, the space it traverses elongates, stretching out the waves and inducing redshift in the light. The degree of redshift increases with the galaxy's distance, as the light from more distant objects has to travel through an ever-expanding space. This redshift phenomenon enables us to gauge the extent of the universe's expansion since the emitted light's origin. The Hubble constant, serving as a measure for the rate of space expansion, is estimated to be around 65 kilometers per second per megaparsec. A megaparsec equates to approximately 3.2 million light years. Consequently, the greater the number of megaparsecs between us and the galaxy, the more expansive the space undergoing expansion causing the galaxy to recede at an accelerated rate. At a distance of 100 megaparsecs, space is receding from us at a velocity exceeding 6.5 thousand kilometers per second. Due to the limitation of light speed to approximately 300,000 kilometers per second, there reaches a point where galaxies are moving farther away from us faster than light speed. This isn't a violation of physical laws, as the galaxies themselves aren't moving at such speeds. Rather, the vast expanse of space between us and them prevents their light from traversing the universe in time to reach us. This marks the boundary of our observable universe, the cosmic horizon or particle horizon. Beyond this limit, we cannot perceive any further, encountering galaxies whose light either hasn't had sufficient time to reach the solar system or is so distant that it can never reach us. Over time, older and more distant light gradually passes through the solar system, 
expanding our observable universe, and broadening our field of view. However, this expansion is contingent on our vantage point. To an observer at the cosmic horizon, space appears much the same, but beyond the horizon lies what is termed causally disconnected space, unreachable and undetectable to us through any known means. Due to the geocentric nature of our observable universe, this characteristic extends to any planet within the cosmos. Each point in space delineates its unique arbitrary observable universe, featuring a radius of approximately 46 billion light years, defined by a cosmic horizon. This radius is not determined by the distance of the farthest observed objects when their light originated, but rather by their estimated current distance. The expansive space between us and these objects has grown significantly since the light commenced its journey toward Earth. The galaxies in the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, now positioned over 40 billion light years from Earth, have surpassed a distance where their light could feasibly reach us. Beyond the cosmic horizon, light speed and the universe's age cease to align, confining us to our observable universe, isolated from the broader cosmos. Consequently, it remains uncertain what lies beyond this boundary. However, given the apparent large-scale isotropy of the universe, one might anticipate a continuation of familiar elements, clusters and superclusters of galaxies. The fundamental question revolves around the quantity of it. As anticipated, answering this is exceedingly challenging, and current estimates rely on measurements of the universe's curvature and assumptions about its shape an area that remains somewhat ambiguous in cosmology. Skipping intricate mathematics and science details, the prevailing estimate, crafted by physicists at Oxford University, suggests the universe's total area must be a minimum of 250 times the radius of the observable universe. This implies a universe diameter exceeding 23 trillion light years, making our observable universe, spanning 93 billion light years, a mere 1 15 millionth of its overall expanse, if our observable universe harbors two trillion galaxies, the unobservable universe could potentially contain as many as 30 quintillion galaxies. While the exact size of the total universe might remain elusive, considering these figures, it appears highly likely that somewhere else in space, life might unfold in another world. The identification of the universe's expansion stands as one of the most crucial discoveries, yet the complete picture remains elusive. Initially, Astronomers expected the expansion rate to decelerate over time, as galaxies on the inside exerted a pull against the universe's inflation. However, in the quest for a more precise Hubble constant value, scientists stumbled upon a surprising revelation. Following the Hubble era, advancements in redshift surveying techniques have significantly enhanced our ability to detect galaxies, extending from millions to billions of light years away. Leveraging redshift as an indicator of the universe's expansion, we can correlate a galaxy's distance with its redshift to gauge the extent of the universe's expansion at different evolutionary stages. However, this task is far from straightforward due to variations in galaxies' brightness, posing challenges in precisely estimating their distances. A more effective approach to measuring cosmic distances involves using a standard candle, an object with a known absolute magnitude. By analyzing the object's dimness relative to its expected luminosity, we can calculate its distance accurately. With this strategy in mind, two independent projects, the High z Supernova Search Team and the Supernova Cosmology Project, embarked on measuring the universe's expansion over time. They employed distant Type 1a supernovae as standard candles for this purpose. Type 1a supernovae, originating from white dwarf stars in binary systems, are superluminous explosions with relatively consistent brightness capable of outshining their entire galaxies. Using these stellar phenomena as reference points, both projects determined the distances of distant objects and then compared them with the respective redshift values of each object. The unexpected outcome was that objects in the far reaches now appear significantly more distant than those closer to us. It's almost as if the universe, in the latter part of its existence, has undergone substantial expansion, or more precisely, an acceleration in its expansion. Our understanding acknowledges that the universe has undergone varying states of expansion based on its evolutionary phases. At one juncture, there were indications of a slowdown, aligning with earlier predictions. However, approximately 4 billion years ago, 
and for reasons still unknown, an unseen force emerged, diverting the universe's growth trajectory and instigating an accelerated expansion. This acceleration intensified in the recent few billion years, ushering in a new era in 21st century astrophysics, the exploration of dark energy. Dark energy designates the imperceptible force accountable for the universe's accelerated expansion. Our knowledge about it is exceedingly limited, except for its apparent resemblance to an anti-gravity force. Operating with a negative repulsive pressure, it counteracts gravity, contributing to the universe's expansion rather than impeding it. Studying dark energy proves to be exceptionally challenging. It lacks interaction with light, rendering it invisible and undetectable. Numerous hypotheses exist regarding its nature and prevalence. However, what is established is that approximately 9.8 billion years into cosmic time, dark energy assumed dominance, ushering in the era dominated by dark energy. In the initial stages of the universe, radiation governed its behavior, followed by nearly 10 billion years of matter dominance. Yet, as the universe expanded, the density of matter decreased, spreading it more thinly. In contrast, dark energy is thought to maintain a consistent density, resulting in a proportional increase as the universe expands. A pivotal moment occurred around 4 billion years ago when the density of matter dipped below that of dark energy. This shift prevented gravity from slowing the universe's expansion and instead initiated an acceleration, causing the most ancient and distant galaxies to move farther away. Locally, the universe's expansion exhibits minimal impact, allowing gravity to bind galaxies together, irrespective of the universe's size. Nonetheless, expansive cosmic voids within galaxies and galaxy clusters grow from their dark interiors, gradually isolating galaxies and galactic groups like our local group in distinct pockets of space. Due to the accelerating expansion fueled by dark energy, even our nearest galaxies will eventually recede too rapidly for their light to keep pace. Over time, galaxies positioned at the outer reaches of the observable universe will gradually vanish from our sight. Their light will cease to reach the solar system, causing the cosmic horizon to contract. This process will persist until even the closest galaxies are propelled beyond the cosmic horizon, making our local universe imperceptible. In the distant future, each galaxy's cosmic perspective will be confined to its own stars, surrounded by nothing but vacant darkness beyond the outer perimeters. The sight of other galaxies will be forever lost, and the separation between galaxies will prevent them from merging, ultimately halting the generation of new stars. Before these cosmic transformations unfold, the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies are destined to merge. Subsequently, the resulting elliptical galaxy will gradually deplete its remaining stars. Inevitably, a day will arrive when the last stars in the universe either extinguish or explode, plunging the cosmos into a second, enduring era of darkness. Eventually, the universe's energy will dissipate through natural processes, leading to a state where nothing can transpire. The universe will reach its heat death, marking the cessation of all heat and energy exchanges. Following this, the universe will transform into an entirely uniform, incomprehensibly vast and boundless void, perpetually governed by dark energy. While the conclusion may seem somber, that is the destiny of the universe in the age of darkness. So tell us your thoughts on this in the comments section below, and hit the like button if you enjoyed watching this video.